are watching a dime a dozen on mtgo academy featuring jason moore hi folks it's jason moore here with mtgoacademy.com i want to thank all of you for joining me and i'm glad you could be here for this installment of dime a dozen today we're going to be piloting the new generation the new breed of is it fiend in classic popper here in the two-man queues on mtgo magic the gathering online so is it fiend has undergone an evolutionary process it's become a much stronger much more robust deck than it did before before it was based on kiln fiend and nivix cyclops as it still is but was a more dedicated aggro combo type strategy where you wanted to play cards that would pump their power, specifically cards like Assault Strobe, Artful Dodge to make them unblockable, and Apostle's Blessing to protect them from removal and blockers. And you wanted to try and win in a sort of combo fashion. Well, I think those days are numbered, if not over, thanks to spells like Treasure Cruise and the innovations of players and deck brewers to make this deck um, just more capable of slugging it out in a long game, make it more well-rounded, and uh, incorporate more card advantage. So first of all, with the land base, we're actually playing 22 lands. This deck used to play about 17 lands, maybe one or two more. And it really was short on red and blue sources. But as you can see, that is no longer the case. We've got a few dual lands, including Evolving Wilds, which helps uh, fill up our graveyard for Treasure Cruise. We're also playing Is It Boiler Works, which puts some excess lands into our hand for Faithless Looting. And aside from that, we've got a couple Great Furnace and Seed of the Synod. And I think this is to help prevent cards like Wrench Mind from screwing us up but that's not as big of a deal anymore i would say at least at the time of this recording and then we've got five islands and five mountains so the red and blue sources are actually split completely down the middle that's uh four six ten fifteen of each so we have a pretty high chance of having one of each source in our opening hand which is absolutely phenomenal now, looking at our creature threats, we've got four copies of Delver of Secrets, an amazing early threat in a deck like this and in many decks across the format. Obviously, the Fiend, which this deck is named for, and the Nivix Cyclops, which is a new and improved version of We Dragonauts, definitely comes from this lineage of creatures that get huge power boosts from instants or sorceries. Then our last creature threat is Moldrifter, which is a singleton here. We do get end up hitting a lot of lands in games because of our uh, card draw. So the Mold Drifter helps us capitalize on that and obviously is a card advantage. And versatile because it can be just cast as a divination. So in terms of our, uh, card man our library manipulation, we've got four Preordain and two Serum Visions. Not currently playing Ponder. This is not my list, by the way. This is a list that you can find online. I've written about it in other articles on other sites. So you can see some of the thought process there. I would like to try Ponder out in this deck and also try out some more fetches um, because fetches work well with Ponder and they work well with Treasure Cruise. We've got uh, Faithless Looting as well. This helps fill up our graveyard with flashback spells as well as excess lands so that treasure cruise comes online a little earlier and then we've got a lot of removal 11 removal spells firebolt flame slash is a three of and lightning bolt and uh this doubles up as burn to the face which makes these cards all the more deadly you know just a couple burn spells to the face can really close the game out with one attack step so that's a really strong component of this deck also Lastly, we have Deep Analysis and Treasure Cruise to round out the uh, card draw, and these really help us extend into the late game, which is awesome. As far as sideboarding, the sideboard is pretty much uh, taking off the internet as well, except I didn't have a fourth Hydro Blast, and I believe I cut, I didn't have the third Deep Analysis. So I switched in a Treasure Cruise and a Spell Bomb, 
and this is a one-sided relic of progenitus. If we use relic, it really hurts our own ability to cast treasure crews. So I wanted to uh, just bring in this in as a Tormod's Crypt sort of thing, but it's not necessarily a great choice. We'll see. Time will tell. Um, we've got Hydroblast and Pyroblast here in the board. Electricery, elec <laughs> not trippery, as a great sweeper. Some spot removal against uh, Spire Golems and Affinity. And then a Flaring Pain to stop Moments Peace and Prismatic Strands effects. So I hope you and guys I hope you guys enjoy watching this deck and I hope that my ability to speak coherently will return to me as we play in these matches. They should be action packed and I think they'll be entertaining for you. Thank you very much for tuning in to Dime a Dozen here at mtgoacademy.com. Thanks guys. Curious about the price of a Magic Online card? Try our searchable price guide on the right sidebar of any mtgoacademy.com page. Well, hello there, MTGO Academy. This is Jason, and we are on the draw in the two-man queues in Popper, and we're going to keep this hand. We've got some manipulation. We can find some threats. We've got a removal spell. Got some graveyard interaction, and it looks like we're playing against Tron. Now, this can sometimes be a problem depending on how explosive their opening is. So, we've got a lot of options. I think we probably want to either cast Looting or cast Serum Visions. And because, well, we have four lands in play, we can loot and pitch one of the lands and pitch the Deep Analysis. I think that's going to be my play. I'm not sure if it's better than casting Visions, but we could get in a weird situation with Visions where maybe we have to fetch instead. So I'm actually going to pitch one of the islands because I think we might want a second red source. So I'm going to pitch an island in a deep analysis. And we will pass. We still need to find a threat. Hopefully we can get a uh, Cyclops. So I think next turn I probably will Visions. Or we could just cast Deep Analysis. And actually we just get hit with a Bajuka Bog. So we're not doing... We're definitely not doing Deep Analysis. But the good news is he does not have a second Tron piece. So here we're going to Visions. But the problem with that is we may have to do something awkward with the fetch lands. We also have the option of throwing a Firebolt at his face, but I don't think we're going to do that. We do see a Delver. Now, um, keeping both of these is an option, but we're not going to be able to fetch next turn if we do that. So I think we'll just keep one of them. We'll draw it next turn. Um, we'll play a Delver and we'll probably just fetch. Now we could set it up to flip, but we can do that in a couple turns also. All right, so we played our land. Let's go ahead and pass. And we're saving the Firebolt maybe for a Mole Drifter or maybe to power up one of our Fiend guys. Here's a Prism. He may be fishing for a land. And if he misses a land, we are very happy. So I think I'm just going to play Delver here and uh, get a second red source. Which we will do at the end of his turn. Then if we decide we want to preordain, we can fetch the uh, Evolving Wilds. The Bajuka Bog actually was a pretty good play on his part. It got rid of two of our flashback spells and he has firebolt as well so that's going to resolve and he might have just another sphere but no land which would be good for us so let's go ahead and get a mountain yeah all right
Okay, there's another Delver. So I'm going to play that and just play the Evolving Wilds. We could try and set up... Yeah, maybe we try and set up our next plays, but... No, I'm just going to play the Delver. Continue to hit our lands. This will also filter out some of our lands. And we just, we're just we pretty much hoping that we find some threats before he gets his mana going and, and play some extreme threats for us. So he's just going to burn this. That's fine. Kind of on the fence of whether or, not, whether or not I should get a third red source or a third blue source. But I think I'm going to get a third red source. Okay, I think he's still missing lands, which would be really good for us. So I'm going to get a mountain. Then we're going to get to preordain, find another threat. Hopefully, if uh, everything goes well. He's on six cards. He's got two fire bolts in the yard. So now we're switching the script. We're just going to play Mole Drifter. It's a threat. It's getting us some card advantage. And just putting us way ahead in the game because he's stuck on two lands. We're at five. We're going to be able to do a lot more over the course of our turns, which is awesome. We played our land, so I'm just going to have six. And we find some good ones. So let's see what he can do. I think he's going to start hitting lands. But if he doesn't, then... No complaints on my side of things. We're very close to casting Treasure Cruise. We'll probably probably lead with Preordain and then go from there. Maybe Cruise for two mana, which would be good. Okay, three mana here. Don't know what this could be. Seagate Oracle, all right, that's fine. We can fly over that. Um, he did find a second tower which is probably the worst Urza piece he could have found because he really wants to assemble the, the hat trick. I'm going to drink some trusty amp energy drink, so bear with me here. So we'll go ahead and preordain first. There's a Cyclops. We definitely want that. I don't think we want the mountain, so I'm just going to get the Cyclops now. And I'm going to attack. What I'll do actually is just play the Cyclops and then attack. And next turn we're going to try and go off and just take him down. Pretty much because we, we have a lot we can do. We'll save our instants and sorceries for this lovely Nivik Cyclops, which he may not be able to deal with. And if we can just flame slash that Seagate Oracle out of here, uh, we'll be looking pretty good. It looks like he has a second one. So I can try and dig for a second flame slash. And I think that might actually take him down. Because what we can do is we can preordain and then treasure cruise, play two flame slashes, and then firebolt him. He'll be taking f uh, a lot of damage from that. I think that's one, two, three, four, five spells. So, yeah, he'll be dead. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and preordain first. Even a second Firebolt, I think, will do it. So getting that third red source is actually pretty important here. And there's a Lightning Bolt, so that's, that's just fine. We can bottom the preordain, take the Lightning Bolt. Then we can cast Treasure Cruise. And I think this game is actually over. Unless he has something crazy. Um, I believe the card is called Snapback. No, he can't even cast that. So yeah, I think we've actually just got him here. I don't think there's a free spell he can, he can use against us. Alright, and we draw another Lightning Bolt. So here, what we just do, Flame Slash this. Bolt the uh, Seagate Oracle. This is at 13. And then we bolt him. And 
then it's at 16 and he's he's it's just enough to take him out so we don't need to play a land or do anything else we'll just uh, make sure we do this properly yep bolt him And we'll, we will attack. We won't uh, play any lands or anything. Okay, he uh, concedes there. So that was good. He did get set back on lands a bit. As we can see, it's it's your basic Tron strategy. He does have Bajuka Bog, which is going to work well against us. And he actually has Treasure Cruise too. I didn't see that, but he had to discard. Makes total sense that he would be playing Treasure Cruise. So I think... The main incorporation that we want to bring in is Pyroblast as opposed to Hydroblast, which can stop some of his removal, but I don't think it's actually that relevant. If we can stop his Drifters, his Cruises, and he's probably bringing in Hydroblast, I think we'll be fine. Also, keeping in some of these card advantage spells I think will be important. Though he might be targeting our Graveyard, which will make Treasure Cruise and Deep Analysis in particular... Uh, a bit worse. Flame Slash, I think, is actually necessary because of uh, his fatties, like Ulamog's Crusher. But I could be wrong about that. Lightning Bolt, I'm going to try taking out just to uh, see how we like it in exchange for Pyroblast. Now, we also have a Graveyard Hate spell, which can hit his uh, Haunted Fengraph his treasure cruise, but I think it's a little bit narrow. Basically, if he gets that far along in the game where he's got all of this mana and he's got his late game engine running, I think we're going to have a big problem beating him regardless of what kind of disruption we have. So the idea here is to protect our key threats with Pyroblast. And, uh, well, that's not a key threat, but... And uh, basically just run him over. So let's do let's uh, make that attempt, and then we can adjust as the match continues, if it continues. Okay, so we're on the draw. We have a pair of py pyroblasts, and we have a delver of secrets, and we have all of our mana. So I'm going to keep. What we can do is play turn one delver, turn two fetch this into preordain. And uh, he'll have to have an answer for the Delver, which he probably does, but that's okay. So let's, he's got his uh, expedition map. And we're not going to play Seat of the Synod out. We'll play the Island. And we'll F6 from there. So two Pyroblasts, hopefully that'll come in handy. He does. He's going to find his Tron, so that'll be interesting. <laughs> but aside from that, he doesn't have color yet. He'll have color on turn three. So he's got his nut draw. Obviously, he's going to be getting a power plant. So we will auto yield to this and see what comes up. It's another Delver. So actually, I'm not going to play um, I'm not gonna play preordain what I'll do here is uh, play Delver play evolving wilds and then attack and then hopefully both of these flip which I think would actually be actually be pretty great for us even though he has Tron active this is another powerful part of the deck is that you can have multiple Delvers on the table. Okay, so he's going to start killing stuff. But that's okay. We can preordain into something else. Actually, he's going to cast, what, Marauder? Or Ancient Stirrings? Nope, Ancient Stirrings. So we're probably still in business here. Um, he's going to kill one of these, though, I think. Because he's going to find color fixing and then burn something 
And if he finds Ulamog's Crusher, we might be in trouble. No, it's a mountain, but he played his land, question mark? Yeah, he played his land, so... He's got four cards. We know one of them is mountain. He's going to cycle this, so... Ooh! Seagate Oracle. All right. I'm just going to sack this. Save some time. Probably should have done that already. We're not really... Uh, Hiding any information by sack by not sacking so, and he doesn't have any mana left to do anything other than play a star out, and we know that he's got F seven, um, and then we're gonna auto yield one of these pyroblasts. Perfect. So now they're flipping. We have three pyroblasts in hand. So he knows about that. I'm going to go ahead and preordain now. And we have him basically on a two turn clock. There's a Kiln Fiend and a Nivix Cyclops. I definitely want Kiln Fiend. I don't know that I want. Well, actually, um, this is a tough one. I think we want both, actually. Um, but the problem is we can't power them up. So maybe it's incorrect. This is actually really tough for me to decide. I guess we keep them both. We're going to try this out. And I think we'll bash for six and play the Kiln Fiend. If he has a Mole Drifter, we can simply Pyroblast it next turn, and that makes it a pretty big threat. Makes the Kiln Fiend a, a reasonable threat. So I don't actually see a reason to leave up Pyroblast here. I'll go ahead and play Kiln Fiend. Because I think he's in trouble either way you slice it. Just jamming a bunch of threats and making him deal with one of them, or all of them, is a pretty good plan here. There's that mountain. And this looks like Ulamog's Crusher, so this, this is going to get interesting. So what we can do here is bash him for six and then play Cyclops. And then we're going to pitch... Maybe two lands, I'm really not sure. He has to attack with that uh, Crusher, so... Things are looking pretty great. <laughs> and then we can Pyroblast the Seagate Oracle, which powers up both of these. So I think I'm just going to pitch the two lands, because we have three red spells here. So that's the plan. And we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. Facing down a Crusher is not ideal. He's going to burn something like the Kiln Fiend. He might even burn the Aberration, but that's still kind of dangerous for him. Yeah, he has to decide what he's going to burn. He's got enough mana to burn another one. So... That actually might be a problem. If he just has no... If he just has all colorless... I think uh, we can probably win here. We're going to find out. I'm sure he's got another fixer. They play so many, so... Uh, he can burn the Kiln Fiend, but I still don't think that's enough. I think he's just short. He knows we have Pyroblast, so... This, we might have just outraced. Even Mole Drifter, I don't think, saves him. So he's going to burn. It doesn't matter what he burns, actually. Yeah, I think we got him here. Even, even a uh, turn three Tron was enough. And we have another mountain. So we're going to go ahead and just do this. This is exactly seven. So let's try it. Okay, so we win the match here. We're getting a booster of cons of Tark here. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching. That was somewhat of a quick one. So uh, glad to pull out the win. Thanks, guys. Do you love to play Magic Online but have a tight budget? Check out MTG Academy's Academy Budget Bot in the Magic Online Classifieds. All cards in stock are cheaper than one event ticket. All right, looks like it's that time once again to play some Popper here in the Two Mans. 
And we have to mulligan this because we have isn't boiler works times two, and we can't actually play those without having to bounce them back to our hand. So we're going to mulligan. And we're going to keep this one because we can find a red source and then get crazy, hopefully. And I don't know if it's better to cast preordain before serum visions, but I'm going to cast preordain before serum visions. And it uh, looks like we're playing against Delver. So let's go ahead and preordain. And being on the draw against a turn one Delver might be a problem for us. So let's find that red source as soon as possible. We're going to have to bottom both of these because we really want that red source. So we have two removal spells and a threat. So having Cyclops is not really what I want. I think I hit bottom already now. Okay, and it's a treasure cruise, which doesn't really help us. Might not even help us at all this game. It really depends if he's mono blue Delver or not. If he's mono blue, we might be in trouble. So I'm going to auto yield to this. And he did not flip. So that is one saving grace. It looks like it probably is mono blue. Let's see if he actually uh, hits us with ninja here. That appears to be what he's doing. So that's not good, but not terrible either. A mountain off the top would be great. We also have another draw step to find it with that serum visions. So here goes nothing. We hope we get a mountain here. But we do have three removal spells. We definitely want that uh, that mountain, but we don't want the treasure cruise, I don't think. So we're just going to have to wait, unfortunately. We're going to take another hit from Ninja, and then if he has a third land, he can not only play Delver, but he can protect his guys, which means we'll get hit with Ninja again, and we're probably just going to lose at that point. Yeah, this is not looking good. His start is amazing, especially with us not hitting that red source. So we're just going to throw this out here. I'm going to throw out the Firebolt and uh, try and hit his Ninja because allowing him to, to draw cards that many times in a row is terrible. It's not going to work, but <laughs> we got to keep the faith alive, I suppose. I'm not sure what the Delver matchup is like. Surprisingly, I'm not, I actually don't know. So we're just going to keep trying to hit that ninja, and then we're going to try and hit that Delver. But I don't think it's going to work. I think he's got all the tools he needs. And he flipped on a piracy charm, which is not the worst. Looks like he's thought scouring himself. Okay. So he's basically set up his list to account for treasure crews. So he's going to make me discard. I think I have to discard. I was going to discard Treasure Cruise, um, but maybe it's just Kiln Fiend. I think it's Kiln Fiend because these red, our red is going to be tapped out in a sense in order to try and hit Ninja. So there's a Bolt. I think we're just going to go with the Flame Slash. We could also bolt on his upkeep. Maybe that's a better idea, but he has four mana now. So we'll have five in the yard. I think we'll just have to bolt on his upkeep, I guess. And we'll be at six if that doesn't work. Trying to hit the ninja. It's a high priority target. So he's going to counter it. Right. So it's possible he doesn't have a counter spell this turn. But not likely. And we're at six, so not only do we have to stop Ninja, we have to stop Delver. So what we can do is Flame Slash and then cast Treasure Cruise, I suppose.
But the thing with that is, I think we have to play the island. Okay. Because I don't want to get rid of Firebolt. At least I don't think. I'll be at one. We actually lose if he has... We haven't played a land, right? So I think we're going to try and find a mountain here. We're going to sack the Firebolt. We don't have enough time. One, two... So the Firebolt's going away. And this is our, uh, our big chance here. So we have some outs. We have a mountain is an out. Uh, actually, that's the main one. And I'm not seeing that anywhere. So we're probably just going to bite the dust to a piracy charm. I'm going to go ahead and get a mountain and uh, try and save some time on the clock. I think that was it for us. I mean, what could we really have here? Now, the reason I fetched is to thin out a chance of getting land. And this should probably do it for us. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's going to be it. And he's got a counterspell backup. And he's got five cards. We do have two removal spells, but it's not enough. So let's go ahead and concede. GG! So that was pretty brutal. I mean, he had a great start. Turn one, Delver. Turn two, Ninja. Turn three, replay that Delver. And leave up Counterspell. And that's all he really needed to do, was just counter all of our relevant spells. We had only one red source, so we could only do one thing, one meaningful spell a turn. Alright, so... I'm not sure how to board here. I think actually Treasure Cruise might be one of the weaker cards because he has so much counter magic. If he counters one, our graveyard is pretty shallow and we don't have a good chance of playing another one. So I think if we just add a bunch of removal, we might be uh, good to go. Electricery and Electrostatic Bolt are considerations. This is actually a really nice uh, inclusion because it can hit Spire Golem and Delver and Ninja at instant speed. So there might be something else we want to... I think our own Delver might be... Might be bad. Probably not, though. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. It gets stopped by Spire Golem. But it also blocks his flyer, so I think that's a good enough reason to keep it. I think all of these removal spells are fine. Our threats probably still okay. Deep analysis seems expensive. My only uh, concern is that if we cut those, we don't really have any type of uh, card advantage, which seems like a problem. We have some filtering. Faithless looting becomes much worse. So maybe it's better to cut faithless looting and try and leave in something else. Or maybe we just try and get rid of all of his guys. We have 61 cards currently, so that's not going to work. I'm going to leave the bolts at home. We have three flame slash. And most of our guys fight through um, his spire golem already. And I actually would like to have a draw spell in here, but I guess we're going to have to... We have 59 right now. Okay, so we'll, we'll bring in Analysis or Cruise. I'm not sure. I guess Cruise. We can probably defend with a Pyroblast easier than Deep Analysis, even though he can... He has Piracy Charm, so that's something to think about. Um, but he might take those out. He probably boards those out, so we're going to play first. We're going to try like that. I'm, I'm not in love with it, but... And we can keep this. This looks really good. We can play Delver, and we can get rid of his Delver, and all that good stuff. So maybe this is a decent matchup. I think all of our board control is really going to help. We really only need to stick one relevant guy... And uh, he might have some problems. So he does have Hydro Blast. But this hand alone might, might be enough to do it. He doesn't even have a follow-up. So let's yield. Mm, 
No, we're not going to reveal that, but we are going to play it. Because that's really a lot of pressure. I mean, he may have a, a Hydro Blast here, but that's okay. If he doesn't, I think we've got a significant advantage. All right, let's see what he thinks about this. He's going to counter it. Well, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> okay, he's just going to pass, so we can sit on Delver, I guess. Yeah, we will reveal. So we have a preordain. We also have Faithless Looting, which I don't really want to use here. So I'm going to cast Preordain. Maybe he counters it. If he casts Spell Stutter Sprite, we have the option of uh, bolting. Okay. But is it more important to firebolt this or to try and find a land? I think maybe we try and find a land, though. If we do, we have to pitch one of these. So maybe we just firebolt. That seems fine. Uh, I don't know. I mean, what I'm thinking about is that he cast that Spell Stutter Sprite, so if we attack him, then we have to face probably Ninja next turn. Which I guess is okay, because we can Firebolt that. So maybe that's incorrect. That doesn't seem too good. Yeah, this seems okay. For I mean, it seems good for him. Um, so I'm not really willing to... Uh, to sacrifice my guy for that so let's go ahead and loot and see what we can do I would love to resolve this treasure cruise but we probably have to pitch it now we actually have to pitch two cards so I guess it's gonna be firebolt and treasure cruise which is not very good <laughs> yeah I think that's what we have to do I'm not sh I don't really think that I like looting here, but and by here I mean in this matchup. But we may have just learned that lesson a little too late. Not going to attack. If he does uh, hit us with ninja, we can try and bolt it. Thought Scour targeting himself. He loses a golem, which is actually not bad for us. And now he's going to do it again. So I think he's playing this over like Preordain. So now I think he's going to actually Treasure Cruise. Unfortunately, we do not have Pyroblast in hand. So there's that. We might also want to consider uh, starting to burn him. I'm sure he found a, a land. He's going to not attack, I would imagine. So, I'm not going to throw this bolt at him. Does not seem worthwhile. Losing our only treasure cruise is not too exciting for me. Um, we do want these lands, so maybe we're on the plan of just burning him out now. That could be the case. I don't want to loot here. So then we have to pitch the furnace and whatever is the next worst card. And we still we want the lands. Yeah, maybe we do it. I guess we do it. I'm not sure though. This seems a little weak, but yeah. So I'll ugh. Cyclops is probably not resolving. I think our plan here is to go on burn, so. I'm going to pitch the land and the Cyclops, actually, which sucks. I don't actually know what I'm doing here. Not a huge fan of uh, our position or of the Faithless looting, but I think what we're trying to do is get up to 5 mana and start using this burn. 
but we're not in a rush to do it just yet because he's not pressuring us. We lost our only card advantage spell, like our only major one. So this we can try and burn, but we also might just try and burn him because, wow, he has two. So I think maybe we're using ours defensively. Maybe we just burn him here. I think we're going to wait, though. We have time, and we can figure out what we want. He is tapped out, but I want to see at least one more card to really know. Cyclops we won't reveal, but we will play it. And he probably has a Hydro Blast for it. Maybe we just burn one of his guys at this point. We can trade with the other one. Hmm. We can also try and do it on our turn. I'm just going to wait. He's, he's stuck on three, three lands. We're almost at Firebolt. It's really close. I think the decision is really close. But I'm going to hold for now. The, the Bolt will power up our Cyclops. It'll do a lot of things. So he's got a Ponder in hand. That's all we know. He's going to use it. And now this Cyclops is in a really interesting position because he almost has to double block to do anything. He's going to attack... He's going to push with all. So I think I'm actually going to take this opportunity to block. And I think I know what he's going to do. He's going to replay the uh, the Spire Golem by making a ninja. But what I can do is bolt the ninja if I want. Oh, no. He's not going to do that. He's just going to race. What is three? Okay. So now I can bolt his aberration and attack. We'll see what we draw. Yeah, definitely revealing. So now um, I can bolt the aberration. I can bolt him. Pyroblast the aberration. This gets in for basically 10. That puts him to 6. And I think at that point he has to hold back. But we might just save the Pyroblast to protect my guy as well. I'm not really worried about the Geist. He's going to leave it on defense anyway. And then he's got to defend against the uh, Cyclops. Now if he has a Hydro Blast, I don't think we're really surviving anyway. So I'm going to actually make this play while he's uh, defenseless. He loses a Delver. Alternately, we could also have played two spells on this, which would have allowed me to get in for three, but actually it'd be seven. It's the same amount of damage, so... Yeah, let's just do it this way. And so that we don't waste any more time, we're just going to bolt him. He's really low, so what this affords us is the option of fire bolting him also. So it drops him to six. That means he really can't pressure us too heavily without uh, being afraid of some kind of repercussion. So now he's just going to hold back. It looks like he's going to want to double block. See, he's even holding back with another uh, counterspell on the way. So we're going to Visions here. And we probably will send in the Cyclops, depending on what happens with uh, if the Visions resolves. It looks like it's going to be a Sprite. So now we can trade the Cyclops off for basically a golem.
And I think that's okay. Because all he needs to do is draw a Hydro Blast to uh, really do any... All he has to do is draw a Hydro Blast to, to nullify this Nivix Cyclops, so... I'm pretty sure him blocking is correct. All right, so it's his turn. He's sending those two guys. Let's see what happens. I'm not blocking. He's probably going to ninja and then get back the golem. He's going to cast ponder to find an island. Or maybe he's just going to have shields down. If he casts Golem, he it, he kind of has shields down. Kind of. All right, we're going to Visions again. I don't think we're getting out of this, though. I think we're pretty much just finished. Flame Slash would be okay. Well, I don't think either of these really saves us now that we missed... We kind of whiffed on that Visions. So we can trade, ostensibly we can trade Ninja for Delver. We take five. Pyroblast doesn't do enough. I don't know what we're trying to draw, though. These are some of our... We have, we have Firebolt. So we block here. We, go, we take five. We're at six. We kind of need Flame Slash. So I'm going to bottom both. And not only do we need Flame Slash, we need... We need him not to counter it. So I don't think we're getting out of this. We'll just pass. We're going to try and trade the ninja off. Or the delver off. And that's kind of a bummer because... Well, it's just not looking too good. Yeah, I'm going to block ninja. Whoops. Okay, I'm misclicking here, but it doesn't really matter. So that's that. He might have another one. Oh, another treasure cruise. That's going to definitely seal it, even though it was already sealed. That'll definitely do it. He doesn't need to even get too risky. He just has to sit on what he's doing. Um, so we could throw this at his face and then hope to draw another one. I guess that's pretty much our plan. He sent me a message. Uh-oh. Sending a message. Thanks. You too. I guess he's telling me that <laughs> he thinks it's over. All right, let's see what he does with that. Well, I'm going to try and bolt him. It's my only uh, my only chance. I doubt it will resolve. Yeah, that's going to definitely clinch it. And uh, we'll just concede here. All right, so we got pretty handily rolled in that first game and in this game his treasure cruises definitely did a number on us i think we probably wanted to keep ours in having just the one and then having to pitch it to faithless looting was really lame i did not like that so uh sideboarding was probably bad i think our opening hand was nice but we just got outperformed by uh, mono blue a little bit more consistent mana a little more fluid so that's something to take note of all right, guys, we'll talk to you later. If you'd like to purchase Magic Online cards at competitive prices, check out our web store at mtgoacademy.com slash store. Hey, guys, Jason here again, and it looks like we've won the die roll. 
finally won a die roll. So we're definitely going to take advantage of that and play first. Now, this is really interesting. We have just one land, but we have two Delvers and we have a Preordained. So uncharacteristically, I am going to keep this one lander on the play. And I think there's enough incentive here. Double Delver opener, I think, is uh, one of the few times that we would want to keep this, but also because we have that preordain. And the uh, Treasure Cruise makes it a little awkward, but not so much so. I think we still definitely want to want to go with this. So we see on the other side of the table a, a Delver as well. So let's find out what is going to happen here. Great Furnace, but that's just fine because now we get to Firebolt this Delver and play our own. So um, of the two spells that we are okay getting dazed, I think the second Delver is probably... Eh, Actually, I think we we're fine getting the Firebolt dazed because at the end of the day, we'll still have two Delvers and we'll have a Firebolt in the yard that can be flashed back. So this is an, ex an exceptional opening for us right now. Even if he does cast Daze, um, I think he'll be in quite a world of hurt. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and crack in. And now I think he's just going to play a land and pass if he's mono blue. In which case, we can kind of just sit on our Delvers. He may also have a Cloud of Fae. He may just be Mono Blue Control. So I would love to flip here. Kiln Fiend, no. I'm not sure if we want to... Uh, if we want to play the Kiln Fiend or try and find a land. I guess we can go with the Preordain here. Or should we go with looting? Haven't been a huge fan of looting. He's obviously sitting on a counter, so let's go ahead and go here. We don't really have a spell we want to pitch. We could pitch the treasure cruise at this point. It's a little early to... Okay, so that's fine. I was actually um, somewhat hoping that would happen. It does keep us from, from attacking, though. But it lets us get this preordained through, which is kind of sweet. So we see a mountain and a cyclops. I think we'll get rid of the cyclops question mark and try and flip. And uh, we'll just play the mountain and pass. I'm not 100% on that. But now we can just uh, go about our business. I'm not going to flashback Faithless Looting just yet. And we're definitely not attacking. I think what might happen here is he's going to hit us with Ninja. So it might have been better to attack first, but then we would have just been springing into that uh, Spell Stutter Sprite trap. So let's see if he... I don't think he's going to Ninja here. Because he leaves himself open. But it looks like he's going to do it, so... A great draw would be another Firebolt, because then we could Firebolt and Kiln Fiend and flip these Delvers. That would be amazing. Oh, I called it. <laughs> wow. All right. Beautiful. So let's make sure that's going to resolve. And then I'm going to play Kiln Fiend. I'm fine with Kiln Fiend getting dazed, but more importantly, I think we want to get rid of him. So that would be awesome. So basically our best possible draw just came to fruition. All right, take six. So next turn he might have uh, Spire Golem with Counterspell Backup. He's gonna brainstorm here, that's fine. And he quickly Resolve that brainstorm. He knew exactly what he wanted. So yeah. Okay, so we may actually cast Faithless Looting depending on what we draw. There's another Kiln Fiend, so we could probably try and drop that. But we could also loot and then attack with the Kiln Fiend. 
Um, no, actually that won't work because he's sitting on Spell Stutter Sprite. So I guess we'll just play this, uh, the second Kiln Fiend. It's probably getting countered. But after that, I don't know. We'll see what happens. If he counters it, it makes our Treasure Cruise easier to cast. Sure. So I'm not attacking. He's at 13, we're at 18. He's got a definitely advantage on, of cards. We know one of his uh, cards is a Spell Stutter Sprite. So if he attacks here... Oh, okay. Well, now. Again, not in love with him getting value out of that Sprite. And if we do resolve the looting, I guess we'll try it. He's probably going to counter it. Maybe I should have done it last turn. But if it does resolve, we're probably getting rid of Delver, actually. I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not sure what we're doing. Um, but let's see. Pretty sure he's gonna counter it. At which point we can attack with Kiln Fiend, which is fine. Oh, he held two mana, but. Okay. So that's just going to get exiled. I will attack with Kiln Fiend now. Could have done it last turn, but chose not to. He has three cards. So probably one or two more counters. He's going to nine. We have two Delvers and we have two Firebolts. So I'm really liking our position. He can't get aggressive with the Sprite, I don't think. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. We're still just going to hold that treasure cruise. There's a cloud of fey. So now he can double block the kiln fiend. So we may just have to try and get crazy here. Um, I'm actually just going to divination. Seems fine. Playing Delver is... Uh, it's alright, but I'd rather get our graveyard full and then also find lands. So he's going to counter this. Okay, so one of his cards in hand is, a, is an island. So we'll just have six. Okay, so now his hand is completely unknown, but he can't get aggressive. We have all the time in the world. As long as he doesn't hit a treasure cruise, which doesn't seem like he's going to. He could just send Spire Golem. It looks like he's considering that, so I think one of his other cards is going to be uh, a ninja. So I'm going to throw out the Kiln Fiend, and then I'm going to throw out the Delver. And maybe we want the Kiln Fiend to resolve more than the Delver. That that makes sense. Even though both of them will actually go down to a uh, Spell Stutter Sprite at this point. So we'll go ahead and play them. And then we're really close to Treasure Cruise also. So if we find lands, we're okay because we're close to Firebolt. If we find spells, we're okay because we get closer to Cruise. So things are actually all right. I'm going to go ahead and play this also. Because who cares? <laughs> Might as well. We want to force him to do something. So if he's holding his last counter because he's not worried about a Delver, that's fine. But I, don't, I think he actually doesn't have a counter in hand. I think he's got a Ninja and maybe a land or something of that nature. Maybe a snap. If he had a snap, I think he could have hit the Spell Stutter Sprite. So right now, he's looking really bad. I think he's gonna. we're going to force him to use that ninja now. And if not, I mean, one preordain could set this whole thing out of control. I mean, he's kind of forced into a situation where he has to use ninja. So he has to throw the Spire Golem. Okay, maybe not. The only thing that could really hurt here is Echoing Truth. So, if he has that, good for him, but it's a really narrow thing to try and play around. We could also just sack these bolts to get a Treasure Cruise, but again, we're not in a rush. We have board presence, we have life total advantage, we have some degree of inevitability. Yeah, I will reveal. So now we're going to trigger both of these Kiln Fiends, and that's amazing. Uh, we're also going to get 
get some cards in there for Cruz. We probably just let whatever other two spells in hand go to the bin, but I'm, I'm not 100% on that. So now we can attack with everything. He can eat this. Ooh. Okay, there's a counter spell, but it doesn't matter at this point because we're just attacking with everything. We could also cast Treasure Cruise, and that would power them up even more. We lose our Fire Bolts, though, and I don't really like that. So I think we'll just attack with all. He can, yeah, he has to block at least one of, he has to make some really horrible blocks. Even if he has a an Echoing Truth, which if he does, it's a pretty good, it's like the best thing he could possibly have. But I think otherwise he's just in a lot of trouble. So, yeah, he just concedes. Um, he could have blocked here, here. Yeah, okay. Uh, he was just in a really bad spot. So from our last match, this is a little bit different. This is doesn't seem as dependent on Treasure Cruise. And I'm not sure what I want to do. I didn't like Faithless Looting in our last match. That doesn't mean I'm going to necessarily get rid of it for sure, but it's one of the cards I want to consider getting rid of. Um, having Treasure Cruise actually seems useful if we can resolve it at the right time. But I want all of this removal too. Maybe Lightning Bolt is not as good as Blast. Maybe. Um, I, I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense. Flame Slash we want. I think we actually want Electrostatic Bolt. So that gives us six copies of uh, stuff to use. I'm going to try the lootings again, even though everything I said is that it's bad or whatever. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to also try Deep Analysis and two copies of Cruise. So we're basically, caught, we're basically cutting the Bolts, one Analysis, and one Cruise. And we're adding in Electrostatic Bolt and Pyroblast. I think that makes sense. Uh, we're just going to try it out, just trying out different sideboarding. I don't know what's 100% correct. But we'll see how this goes. It's very nice to be up one. So that hand we kept worked out really well. We ended up drawing a land immediately. So that made things even better. It's crazy how Delver of Secrets, the card, contributes to these opening hands that are just so difficult to beat for a number of different scenarios. I'm going to drink some water while our opponent sideboards. So not a lot else to say. Um, we did see Deprive in his deck. I don't think we saw anything else that interesting, right? We saw Brainstorm. That's kind of interesting. He did not hit a snap. Um, he had all the usual suspects. Cloud of Fey, Spire Golem, Counterspell, Delver, Spell Stutter Sprite. Lots of islands. We didn't see any non-basics. We have to assume he's playing Treasure Cruise. And yeah, that's about it. I mean, just having that double Delver opening, he never was able to stop those Delvers. Even the fact that they got in for one single hit did a number on him. And then he took four from the Kiln Fiend, right? So that was about 10 damage. And I think he took a hit from an unflipped Delver. So that was about 11. He was at nine. And then we had the three Insectile Aberrations, the two Kiln Fiends against his uh, much smaller board, and that was when he conceded. Again, we have a double Delver hand. We don't have any red, but I think two Delvers on the draw, not as exciting as it would be on the play, but I think it's good enough to keep. We also have a Pyroblast and a Flame Slash, which when we hit red will be very relevant. He has a Delver, so this game will be uh, pretty funny. Let's go ahead and main phase our Delver. This treasure crew is probably not going to be a factor for a while. This should resolve. I don't imagine he would daze it. Well, he might daze it. I don't know. Ooh! 
He must be because it's just sitting there. Oh, maybe not. Maybe there was just lag or something. Okay, F6. Trying to be better on the clock. Uh, I've actually timed out in a match with this deck. But it was against a slower deck, so maybe that could be my excuse. I don't know. It just means that the games went long. Okay, so he's going to brainstorm now so that he can flip. And he might also be trying to find a land. But it does give us an opening to resolve our second Delver, which is going to be pretty sweet. And then if he starts to get aggressive, I don't think that's really going to favor him unless he's got a lot of tempo, a lot of counters in hand. <clears throat> he does have a Vapor Snag, so that is some tempo there for sure. I can't block, nor do I think would I. Um, he actually missed a land, though, which is crazy. So things are actually looking quite good. Uh, they're looking so good that he's just going to concede there. He may have actually missed uh, his land drop, meaning he had a land in hand, but he just forgot. Because I don't see why he would brainstorm, flip the Delver attack, and then just concede. I think he forgot to play his land, and uh, he probably was pretty frustrated there and just wanted to concede. I don't really know, but let's see what we would have drawn here. Uh, can I? Is it lagging? We would have drawn Seed of the Synod, so we wouldn't have flipped. Then we would have cast Preordain, seen Nivix Cyclops, and another Preordain. Um, we'd probably bin the pre -or the uh, Nivix because we don't have a red for it. We would have drawn the Preordain, um, played the Delver, hit him for one. Next turn, they would flip off looting. We could preordain again, but he would vapor snag one of these. I'm going to spare you guys uh, any more theory crafting. And we'll just say thank you guys very much for watching. This has been Jason Moore with MTGOacademy.com here at Dime a Dozen. I apologize that this was a shorter match, but playing in the two-man, sometimes that does happen. And uh, sometimes Delver of Secrets makes people rage quit. <laughs>